Welcome to the big balmy apple. Almost tropical temperatures here. And after a college football season as frenetic as Times Square in the holidays, it is Heisman Trophy night. Three finalists dominated ballots. Each worked and earned every step of their path here. Deshaun Watson, quarterback of number one Clemson. Fellow sophomore Christian McCaffrey of Stanford, both making their first visit to the Big Apple. And Alabama junior Derrick Henry, a long way from his tiny hometown of Uly, Florida. We celebrate all three tonight, but only one leaves town with life-changing hardware in tow. Explore the Heisman. Jay Berwanger. John David Crow. Mike Garrett. Steve Spurrier. Winners by school. Ohio State. Archie Griffin. Ohio State. Only two-time Heisman Trophy winner. Quarterbacks. Ty Detmer, BYU, 25th anniversary winner. Detmer back to pass, throws one way downfield, and it is caught. It's a touchdown. Juniors. Desmond Howard, Michigan. Third wide receiver to win the Heisman. Two thousand fifteen finalists Derrick Henry, Alabama. You would expect number two to get the football. Doesn't mean you can stop them. Henry, touchdown, Alabama. Christian McCaffrey, Stanford. There goes McCaffrey. What a run. They just can't believe how good this kid is. Deshaun Watson, Clemson. Watson takes off, breaks the tackle. He's just gliding down the field. Touchdown, Watson! These are the finalists for the 2015 Heisman Trophy presentation. And steps away from Times Square, the home of the Heisman Trophy presentation presented by Nissan. The PlayStation Theater gathering point for the family of Heisman Trophy winners. The senior member is with us tonight. Brigadier General retired Pete Dawkins. Army so close to ending that streak against Navy just a few hours ago. Tony Dorsett, it cannot have been 39 years since his Heisman year. And for Tony, and also for Doug Flutie, love and support from your Heisman brothers during this holiday season. Welcome everybody inside PlayStation Theater. On behalf of all of us at ESPN, I'm Chris Fowler. We cannot tell you how proud we are to present this beautiful trophy for the 22nd consecutive year. An especially strong and classy group of finalists. We'll meet all three momentarily. And to welcome in the newest member in less than 90 minutes, an excellent turnout of former Heisman Trophy winners. We've got 25 of them here tonight. Back for the first time to watch our television presentation, because he usually has been coaching this time of year, is Steve Spurrier. And long before the head ball coach coached Danny Werfel to a Heisman Trophy at Florida, folks, I'm going to tell you, he was a heck of a player, a quarterback, a great punter, and as legend has it, Steve also kicked a game-winning field goal in his Heisman Trophy season. That is super slow-mo. Who moved a lot faster than that? And Steve has my favorite of all these great Heisman portraits because the photograph that that portrait was based on, he told me the photographer said, look mean, look intense, mission accomplished. That, that is a Heisman Trophy portrait. You know, I, I notice a, a very strong contingent of running backs among us tonight. Marcus Allen certainly among them. I wonder if that is a coincidence because two of the three finalists 
are running backs, and many of the running backs have said, you know what, the quarterbacks have kind of had their time. It wouldn't be a bad thing for another running back to finally win this award. I see Archer Griffin down there. Some of these guys nodding that as we shall see how it works out. Really, the finalists in this group, all of them have represented their schools, their families, and this sport so well. All three of them very deserving. They've been hard workers. They've been excellent teammates who have lifted their teammates to be better football players. And they have been a heck of a lot of fun to watch on Saturday. Let's meet all three finalists, Derrick Henry, Christian McCaffrey, and Deshaun Watson. From Alabama, running back Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry starts left, cuts right, stiff arms a man, breaks a tackle. He's off to the races. He has now rushed for a touchdown in 17 consecutive ball games. How about that? He stiff arms one guy to turn the corner, then reaches behind him and stiff arms another. There you go. There you go. You can only keep the man bottled up for so long. Touchdown, Alabama. From Clemson. Quarterback Deshaun Watson. Watson takes a shotgun snap. Going to go with the right side. Into the end zone. He goes diving. Touchdown, Clemson. Watson will take the shotgun snap. Looks downfield. Going long. Touchdown. Bang. Bang. Watson in shotgun. Looking for the end zone. Powers it in the end zone. Touchdown. Deshaun Watson. He stays on his feet inside the 10. The 5. Dies for the pylon. Did he get there? He did. Superman! From Stanford University, running back Christian McCaffrey. McCaffrey breaks one tackle, breaks a second tackle, cuts it back across the field, inside the 35, makes another man miss. McCaffrey for the end zone. Touchdown, Cardinal. McCaffrey will have a shot at it from his own three. Christian, wall of blockers, 20. McCaffrey down the sideline. Incredible run. Christian McCaffrey. Can I get a Heisman pose? All three guys standing near the trophy, the famous pose, and Desmond Howard's creation of that pose based on. Guys, welcome. Congratulations, as we said before, on tremendous seasons, all three of you. Deshaun, there, there is a question that leaps to mind, obviously. The significance of the suit that's the color of these other two guys' home jerseys. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, just really uh, wanted to give back our, our, where it all started, and that's Gainesville. And so, you know, my high school team is red, so I want to, you know, think back from, you know, all this time that started. The Red Elephants, right? right. Absolutely. Former state champions when Deshaun was a junior. We've talked throughout the year, Deshaun, you are one of the coolest most chilled customers in college football, but you never focused on getting this close to this award, but is it real? Does it seem surreal to be that close to the Heisman as a finalist? It's really real. I was, I was talking to those guys back there and, and just, you know, we actually here now and all the, you know, hard work and dedication we put into it to, and the dreaming, you know, just to be on the stage is, is pretty special. So, you know, I'm embracing it, enjoying it, and I'm going to soak it all in. We'll celebrate all of their seasons, all of them prepared so well, worked so hard. Derek, how did never focusing on awards like this help you have the kind of season to be here as a finalist? Um, this is a team effort, you know, and me and my teammates did a great job just locking in and focusing on what we need to do to win every game, but we prepared and practiced real hard. So it's a team effort, you know, as long as you put the team first, everything else will take care of itself. So you're growing up in Florida, kind of weighing your choice of schools. Mark Ingram won this in 2009. Where were you that night? Were you, were you tuned in to watch it? Yeah, I was, I was watching him. He had emotional speech. So yes, he did. Yeah, I, was, I was watching him when he went to Heisman. Yeah, guys tend to be very poised until that moment potentially comes, and then they melt into a puddle, and that, that's, a, that's a beautiful thing in sports. Christian, as a running back who does a bit of everything, how do you rate the, the Heisman pose there? Is he doing it right? Is that, is that a stiff arm you'd approve of? Uh, he's the Heisman, so he must be doing it right. Um, <laughs> no, I, I don't know about the form, but it seemed to work for him. You, like a lot of kids who begin to play football, write down lists of goals. You know, being here for, for this kind of evening was, was one of them. Does it feel a little strange? Has is it, is it sunk in the kind of season you've had as a sophomore? Um, you know, it really hasn't hit me a whole lot until I kind of got, out, got on stage here with, with these incredible athletes and getting to know them has been so special. But um, just this opportunity is so special for myself and my family and, uh, and for Stanford all around, and, and I'm, I'm extremely blessed to be here. We'll talk about your family's athletic legacy. It's, it's pretty impressive. 
Where does this rank? Do you think, is this, is this going to get you in the family pantheon, just being here as a Heisman Trophy finalist? Oh, I don't know. I think regardless, uh, my family's proud and, 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 you know, the support I get from them and, and all the people from back home, I can't thank them enough and, and just really lucky to, to be their son and, and to have three great brothers as well. Well, for Christian and Deshaun, their first trip to the Big Apple and uh, Derek, his second trip. But we wish all of you guys a great experience tonight. And let's have a round of uh, applause for their families who helped get them here and the ones who couldn't be here tonight. Tremendous work by everybody. We got two Heisman Trophy winning colleagues back there, Tim Tebow and Desmond Howard, along with Lee Corso and Kirk Herbstreit. Kirk? All right, Chris, uh, you're back here hanging out in the back part of the stage. And guys, th this is always fun. We come into New York, you guys have won it. Lee, I know for you, you've been back here a long time. <laughs> yes. What is it that you just love coming back here and seeing? Well, first thing, Herschel Walker yeah. and Barry Sanders were two of the greatest players ever, and they broke their records. Now it's Henry and McCaffrey. Yeah. And let me tell you, that's why they're here. Yeah. They were great players. They broke great records. Absolutely. Guys, I know you, we could talk about all three of these guys, yeah. but yeah. you're going to talk about Christian, and you'll talk, obviously, about Derek. What yeah. stood out to you to, to Christian? What I like about Christian is he can, he's a guy that can do everything. Obviously, he's a very good running back, excellent receiver out of the backfield, returns kicks, punts. The guy is quick, dynamic with the ball in his hand. The thing that I think that goes understated and unappreciated about Christian McCaffrey is if you're going to play running back, in the David Shaw offense, you're going to have to be tough because he's going to run you right downhill in between the tackles. And I think that Christian McCaffrey is a very tough football player too, Tim. No question. But someone else that's tough is Derrick Henry. My man Derrick Henry carried the rock 46 times against his rival in Auburn. You know what he was doing that next Tuesday afternoon after practicing full practice? Wait. Squatted 500 pounds. And their strength coach, Coach Cochran, tried to spot him. He said, no, man, I got to carry this. I got to lift this. That's what I love about this kid. Mm. The next week against Florida, 44 carries. Dude is a freak. Yeah. <laughs> and for him to say that, yeah, 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 exactly. yeah, yeah. Uh, and Deshaun Watson, all he did is worry about leading the number one team in the country, counting for over 40 touchdowns, running and throwing, and, and doing it in a way was just such amazing poise, just so much fun to watch. And he's got a big game, maybe two big games, obviously, coming up. So it was fun to watch these guys. And what, Chris, you just heard it. In an era where guys sometimes focus on individual goals, it's, it's nice to hear that uh, these guys are focused on the team and ironically enough, they're about to have a chance to win the best individual trophy in college football. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and all college football fans around the country. Welcome to New York City and the 2015 Heisman Memorial Trophy presentation. My name is Jim Corcoran, and I am honored to be a Heisman trustee. As trustees, we are responsible for preserving the integrity of the Heisman Trophy and generating funds to support the disadvantaged youth throughout the country. The Heisman Trust recognizes with gratitude and appreciation our generous sponsors, Nissan North America, Wendy's, Aflac, The Kellogg Company, and Deloitte. A special thanks to ESPN for another incredible year of college football coverage and this presentation. Tonight we present the Heisman Trophy to the outstanding college football player in the United States. Sit back and enjoy the telecast. Thank you. The Heisman Trophy presentation. And he delivered what had been missing from Alabama's massive trophy case, the school's first Heisman six years ago in the closest race ever. A couple years later, Trent Richardson was a finalist. But setting a new standard for Alabama tailbacks is Derrick Henry. What we see on game days is obvious, but long before he was the tied workhorse, he was the hardest worker on the team, as Tim Tebow alluded to. Those workouts, 120-degree heat index in Tuscaloosa, then into the weight room to do heavy squats. That doesn't happen. In his understated but upbeat way, Derek has literally raised the bar and brought Crimson Tide teammates with him. Indomitable indefatigable, relentless, resolute. Derek enforces his will and embraces a burden that confounds conventional wisdom, breaks boundaries, defies belief. Faster on his 46th carry than his first. Hammering, hammering until the work and Bama's foes are finished. His style is distinct, upright, downhill. 
rugged in the middle, explosive on the edge, decidedly forceful, deceptively fast. Derrick Henry, he's going to go into the secondary. He's going to cut left on the defensive back. Derrick Henry is going to go all the way for a touchdown. Well, you see it, but here are the stats to prove it, that Derrick gets stronger later. He averages an excellent 5.8 yards over his first 30 carries in a game, but after that goes up to an amazing 6.5 yards per carry. When other guys get fatigued and more fumble prone, he never does. No fumbles in a game after his 31st carry. Tell me he has no feel for how many carries he has in a game at all. Opponents say, yeah, they feel it. They are very much aware how often he has the football. Once carried 57 times in a high school game for 485 yards and six touchdowns for the Uly Florida Hornets, where he grew up a fan of Tebow's bruising style. But to find Derek's original inspiration, Kaylee Hartung went to meet the lady who gave Derek his nickname and also gave him his rock-solid values. Photos of a younger number two are on the walls of Gladys Henry's Florida home. Alabama running back Derrick Henry was the 15th child she raised there. Henry's parents, Stacy and Derrick Sr., were teenagers when he was born. Gladys stepped in to raise the child. He was a pretty good kid. I always told him, I say, good manners will take you real money and never buy you. He was pretty good for me to get along with. He, wasn't, he didn't never run the streets a lot. He didn't do that. Hard-working lady, family lady, very family-oriented. Um, so wants to take care of everybody, wants to best everybody. And the woman that really raised me, she worked very hard throughout the week, and just so, just so she could provide for me and my family. Yeah, Papa was a hard worker. I had worked for 62 years until I couldn't go no more. Mm -hmm. What kind of example do you think that set for Derek to see you working all those years? So he ought to knew that he had to do it too, you know. Take care of himself, he had to work. I knew I didn't like to ask for help. I had to work for what I needed. Oh, his grandmother was a, I, I would say she's a trip uh, in a good way. You know, we went on a home visit, you know, a lot of the family, a lot of interest to see that old fashioned sort of family togetherness and how everybody cares for everybody. and. Didn't take me long to figure out that was the one we had to win over. I love her so much, and I mean, without her, I wouldn't be who I am today, so she's everything to me. The love and the wisdom of a grandmother, what's more precious than that? Good manners and other, other good qualities, Tom, have certainly taken Derek a, a long way so far. Chris, thank you very much. Alongside Derek and Nick Saban, couldn't wipe the smile off Derek's face as he watched that feature that Kaylee put together so well. Your, your grandmother, Gladys, not able to be here tonight, wanted to be, but in the hospital back in Florida right now. We heard her talk about the example she tried to set for you, but in your own words, Derek, what did her example mean to you? Um, it meant everything to me, you know. Um, she raised me who, to the person I am today, and man, without her, I wouldn't be the person I am today. I'm just a hard working lady. All throughout the week, provide for our family, make sure everybody had what they needed, and she just cared for us, and I love her so much. Derek, when you were a little boy, you would play a video game, NCAA football, and your goal was to win the Heisman Trophy in the video game. Yeah. When did you first believe it could be real? Well, I mean, you know, I didn't really try to think about it too much. You know, I just wanted to go out there and perform, and. Well, I didn't get a win with my team, you know. They worked so hard for me and they believed in me so much. So my main goal is to help the team win by where I practice and go out there and play in games. Nick, a year ago, we talked about another Heisman finalist that you coached, Amari Cooper. And you said, when your best player is your best practice player, that's invaluable to a coach. How does that apply to this player? Well, we've been very fortunate the last few years to have guys that are the hardest workers, best competitors, represent the team very, very well. The team is important to him. Uh, this guy exemplifies every value that, as a coach that's important to a team. And Derek's just done a fantastic job all year long and uh, is one of the hardest workers on our team and sets a great example for our young players and cares about them. Derek, you had a chance to tour the hall earlier on this Saturday and you stopped for a moment and you took a photo of the portrait of one winner. 
Mark Ingram, mm -hmm. the first ever at Alabama to win this trophy. Mm -hmm. I know you've been in touch with him a little bit. What guidance has he suggested to you through this incredible week and this season? Um, he just told me to embrace it and enjoy it. You only get this chance once. He's been a, a good mentor for me. And he told me if I need advice, just call him because he's here for me, and I really appreciate it. One running back who won the Heisman Trophy for Alabama and another certainly hopeful, Chris. Appreciate the time, Derek. Thank you. Tom, guys, thank you. You know, Derek's original number at Alabama was 27, which makes the comparison with former Ohio State great Eddie George even a little more eerie. Both are tall backs, about six foot three, remarkably similar rushing excellence. 20 seasons apart. Check out those stats line up. The exact number of rushing touchdowns, very, very similar rushing yards per game within a yard and a very similar average as well. These days, Eddie is bracing for something that seems a whole lot scarier than being tackled by a middle linebacker. Acting, singing, and dancing on a Broadway stage. Players here are nodding. Yeah, that sounds a lot scarier. Eddie told uh, Jesse Palmer about this brave new leap. So we're here at the Ambassador Theater, starting January 11th. This is your home for yes. seven straight weeks. You ready for this? I uh, have no choice but to be ready, man. Uh, yes, it will be home. I'm trying to get comfortable. You know, I'm going to go in here, man, and, and try to have a good time. That's about it. Give them the old razzle-dazzle, razzle-dazzle. If I was your teammate 20 years ago at Ohio State, <laughs> and I said, hey, man, congratulations on winning a Heisman Trophy. Can't wait for a couple of years when I get to watch you perform in a Tony Award-winning play, Chicago. What would you say to me? You're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I think you are absolutely insane. Because back then, I was, I was shy, didn't talk a lot, uh, kind of reserved. 20 years ago, amazing to see like how it's crazy how this city has played a major part in huge transformations of my life. It is my pleasure to announce the winner, Eddie George, <laughs> Ohio State. I remember Archie Griffin saying to me, whispered in my ear after I won, he says, you think this is great, it gets better with time. I said, there's no way that could happen. And lo and behold, 20 years later, you know, an opportunity like this presents itself again in New York at another transformative time in my life. So it's, it's been a fascinating journey, man. It really has. Well, take me back to the end of your career then, yeah. because you just mentioned it. You won a Heisman Trophy, mm -hmm. nine years in the NFL, yeah. Pro Bowler, played in the Super yeah. Bowl. Yeah. Who were you when you walked away? When I, the reason I played the game was to fulfill a dream my father never had a chance to fulfill, and that was uh, to be a professional football player, to win a Heisman Trophy, and, and to play college football. Really, that, that was my dream, but it was more his dream than anything else. And then at 31, I'm left with not, I was left with nothing, so I had to go on a journey to find out who I was, what I was passionate about, and pursue it like no other. It's unprecedented in so many ways, though. As former football players, oftentimes you see guys go and coach mm -hmm. or they become an analyst. Mm -hmm. You chose something that takes talent. I definitely would say to get up here uh, night after night and spill your guts and be willing to do what it takes to be honest, to be in that moment, um, it, it takes a great deal of courage. People get nervous in front of hundreds of thousands of people live. Mm. Ohio Stadium. Mm -hmm. A couple hundred people in here? Yeah. How nervous are you when you're up here? Extremely, because they can see the fear and trepidation on your face <laughs> right there. Whereas in the field, you know, you can hide behind your face mask a little bit and you can impose your will on somebody. But up here, it's trying to lose yourself in the story and allow the character to come forward. So not only are you doing theater, but you've also done Shakespeare, mm -hmm. Othello, uh, yes. Julius Caesar. Mm -hmm. What was that like? For always, I am Caesar. I remember coming in to New York, and uh, my wife and I were up here. She's from New York, and um, we uh, went to go see a play. I said, you know what? Let's go check out uh, Hamlet. Smoke comes out, 
And then immediately I was captured. I told my wife, I said, you know what? I'm gonna do that one day. When did you decide, you know what? It's time, Broadway. You know what? It, it, it just presented itself. It wasn't like, well, you know what? Uh, let me go do Chicago. I, you know, it wasn't <laughs> like that at all. The Tennessee Performing Arts Center uh, a folk that called me and said, we have an actor down here you should see. And they mentioned Eddie George, of course, I knew of his uh, history and background, but I couldn't believe that he was going to be solid enough, talented enough uh, to come up here and perform on a Broadway stage. Uh, to my surprise, he came up here to audition and he was a knockout. So I had to come here on this stage and sing the songs of Billy Flynn. And just, you know, lay it all in line, and they said, well, we're, you're good enough that we're gonna do this. Right here on the stage, I said, oh man, this is incredible. I mean, New York City's known for a lot of things, but this is one of them. This is Broadway. This is Broadway, brother. Yes, it is. Wow, you know what? I've, I've lived an interesting life. <laughs> I really, I really have, to have won a Heisman and, uh, had the career I've had in football, and now uh, to be on the doorsteps of performing on, on Broadway is truly phenomenal. Looking ahead down the road, could Eddie George star as Eddie George <laughs> in Eddie George, the musical and journey? Uh, that's a tough one. Uh, I don't know if I have the chops for that. <laughs> uh, winning a Heisman has launched a lot of these guys down here to a lot of interesting things, but Nothing as gutsy as that, Eddie. I mean, are you going to be okay if you're out there on stage and you look at Marcus or Tony? I mean, those guys are... Well, um, I know I'm going to get it after this. After they see that, these guys, <laughs> and when we go out these doors, they're going to let me have it. So, well, it's going to be You dark. can make this a dress rehearsal right now if you want to bust it. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no I'm going to bust it right now, no. Yeah. I need the ensemble, I need the music, I need the smoke and mirrors to help me out. You got bit. a month and it's about mm, four blocks from here, right? Four, yeah, exactly four blocks from here. So I got, it goes up uh, January 12th, runs through February 29th. Everyone is invited. I'm not going to get your tickets, ah. but you're more, more than welcome to come. And tickets are never cheap on Broadway. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something right now no athlete ever wants to hear, but it means good luck to an actor. Break a leg. Uh, thanks a Eddie lot. George, Appreciate it. Chicago. <laughs> Coming up, we'll hear from Christian McCaffrey and Deshaun Watson as our Heisman Trophy presentation continues. Just a few blocks away from the Ambassador Theater. And welcome back to New York City on Heisman Trophy Night. PlayStation Theater is the home. Met with Derrick Henry. The other two Heisman Trophy finalists are coming up soon. For her historical perspective on this beautiful trophy, we always turn to the man who has, I think, an unmatched passion for Heismanology. In fact, you might have even invented the term, Joe Tessitore. I, I, perhaps that happened, Chris. Uh, Chris, as you know, even though it spans 80 years, Heisman history uh, doesn't stretch really that wide. You consider Columbus and South Bend and L.A. Uh, they hold on to 20 of these trophies. As for Clemson and T-Town, Tuscaloosa and the farm out west, Three places that are tradition rich with football. Three places that know a heck of a lot about winning. But combine the three and only two Heismans. Clemson is ACC royalty with 15 conference titles. Yet there's not a bronze stiff arm for the school John W. Heisman himself called home. Five other current ACC schools have one. The highest finish by a Tiger, sixth. That makes Watson their first New York invitee. 37 years ago, Steve Fuller was sixth. His retired jersey number now has gotten more extended wear. Deshaun Watson requested and received permission to use it. Now this number four could be Heisman number one for Clemson. Recent history is on their side. Three times in the past six years, a school has claimed their very first Heisman. One of those newbies, Dabo Sweeney's alma mater. You'd expect that among Alabama's well-earned 115 first-team All-Americans, there'd be a few Heismans. Bear Bryant coached a winner, but never while wearing hounds to. The tide has just won. Mark Ingram's from six years ago. Still, Bama's had more top three Heisman finishes in the last six years than they had in the first seven decades of this award. In fact, Starting in 09, the Heisman front row is practically built by Bama. We now have the fifth tied player in the last seven years to be in Times Square. When Ingram climbed to the podium, he did so by taking the closest vote ever. A photo finished just beyond Stanford's Toby Gerhardt. It's the only time in the past 20 years we saw a pair of running backs finish 1-2. 
Alabama and Stanford. Enter Christian McCaffrey, the only teenager in our front row. The Heisman's always found a home for this type of instant impact player. The all-purpose, all-everything, can't-miss, but can't-touch kid. The kind of player we see in dated images of 72 winner Johnny Rogers, or the far grainier film of Billy Cannon's Halloween Run. A lot of darting and dashing runner-ups have been do-it-all stars, like Darren McFadden or Rocket Ishmael. Yes, runner-ups. That term Stanford has become all too familiar with since Jim Plunkett's win in 1970. John Elway came up short. Gerhardt, the closest anyone's been. And Andrew Luck, one of the greats of all time twice came to New York and left without extra luggage. Yeah, Stanford's persistent knock on that Heisman door from 2009 to 2011 was remarkable. The only time in history a school had the runner-up three consecutive years. Maybe they crashed through that Heisman door with Christian tonight. Kirk? Well, Tess, we've all three watched these three guys all year, from the beginning of the year all the way to the end, and I know you've really enjoyed watching Deshaun Watson, yeah, what he's offered. Deshaun Watson from Clemson, he was responsible for 30 touchdown passes and over 4,000 yards. But the thing I liked about him, he was a quarterback of an undefeated, the only undefeated team. And you know, Des, yeah. he did it by winning the close games in the clutch. That's what I liked about him. Yes, he really did. And I was oh, impressed man. with him. But how about Derrick Henry? I mean, the obvious um, example would be Othello, <laughs> meaning Eddie George. Yeah. yeah. Like, that's the obvious comparison because both guys are similar as far as their size. I didn't realize that Derrick Henry <laughs> was as big as he is until last Thursday when he received the Doak Walker Award from Eddie, and they stood side by side. It's like, okay, um, Derek, you can take your shoulder pass off. I mean, that's how big this kid is. And the running styles, both guys yeah. always falling forward when they're tackled. What's surprising to me about Derek is once he gets into the secondary, it's deuces. Guys can't catch him. He's yeah. fast. The big fella caught Othello. Down there, Eddie, yeah, yeah, Eddie, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, yeah. he whispered that and is saying thanks. Appreciate that. I, and, and watching Christian McCaffrey, uh, you know, at the beginning of the year, and you're right, th this is an offense that's predicated on the power running game with David Shaw, Mike Bloomgren. What they were able to do this year and being able to set up their play action pass with Kevin Hogan. And then watching him in special teams, which I know you appreciate. And he wears that five because he was a big Reggie Bush fan. Yeah. And when you watch him in the open field, yeah. he's not just power. I mean, he makes people miss and he's got speed to take it all the way to the house himself. So uh, we've just really enjoyed watching these guys. And as we said earlier, all three very deserving, Chris. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and all three had performances that spoke for themselves. You, you don't have to have sort of the cute, hyped Heisman campaigns anymore. But 25 years ago, there was a campaign. BYU sent out cardboard ties to voters just to remind them how good Ty Detmer was. You know what? It, it really wasn't necessary because once he took the field for BYU and started throwing the ball around, his quality became evident. Now, there are the crazy stats, the 5,000-yard passing seasons, but it was the way that Detmer created some of those plays. Running around, scrambling, improvising. Yeah, he was on the SI cover in large part because of this game against Miami. These are the Hurricanes here. Look at the escapability, running around, creating a touchdown pass that was early in the season, and it set the tone. And all the great passers BYU had had before, Ty Detmer, the first Heisman Trophy winner. And we salute the silver anniversary Heisman Trophy winner. Can it have been 25 years? Ty Detmer, stand up and, stand up and wave with the folks. <laughs> Ty, what do you think when you see yourself running around like that, and, you know, confounding a very good Miami defense in that victory? Well, it feels like 25 years now after <laughs> watching that. So, uh, you know, you get a chance to relive some of those moments. And uh, great team, you know, we were able to beat Miami early in the season, kind of set the stage for it. But, uh, you know, just a, a great time in your life. You're down there in Texas in Austin passing on your football knowledge and your enthusiasm as a coach. Your players ever ask you about winning the Heisman Trophy? I know it was way, way before they were born, but are they curious about what that trophy means? <laughs> oh, yeah, you know, they'll text me. I'm sure I'm getting texts right now from them all, you know. So, uh, you know, we talk about it every now and then, but, but uh, I, I try to keep it on what's happening right now. Get in the weight room. Let's go. Let's get on our off-season stuff. So, Good coaching. Uh, <laughs> trying. <laughs> you know, it didn't start Eddie George, but there was a special musical tribute to Ty Detmer. 25 years ago that we're going to treat you to right now. The Detmer rap, ladies and gentlemen. Enjoy. Ty Power. This is real. When Lavelle met Ty, 
high the very first day. He said, oh no, Pee Wee Herman's come to play. After Ty's first pass, the team was there to witness. No one child turned to air. We said, we're back in QB business. There I'm not sure your, your Heisman brothers are buying this time. <laughs> I didn't That's not me. You, you, you were in no way involved in this. No, not at all. <laughs> wow. Ooh, a remix maybe? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's right. Ron Dane enjoys it. Johnny? Yeah, yeah. I... Christian McCaffrey has has secret freelance cool. skills, but we are not gonna we're not gonna bring you in to that night. A reminder. I hope you get the highs. The Giants and the Dolphins on Monday night football. Eli Manning back to South Beach for Ryan Tannehill and the Dolphins begins with a countdown at six, kickoff at eight PM, eight fifteen on ESPN. <laughs> You know, the first play of his first game at quarterback was a long touchdown. That was in seventh grade. Then the first play of his first game at starter in eighth grade was also a long touchdown pass. And that was duplicated the first play of every game in that eighth grade season. The legend of Deshaun Watson was born. He carried the Red Elephants of Gainesville to a 5A Georgia State title as the team's only Power 5 recruit. Then came to Clemson with five stars and zero attitude. He beat arch rival South Carolina on one ACL. That was the same season he waited till his second play as a starter to throw a touchdown pass. Now, of course, he's got the Tigers as the top seed in the upcoming college football playoff. Abundant gifts plus rare appetite for preparation equals confidence, equals calm, equals execution. The equation is elementary, but Watson embodies it better than any collegian. Amidst chaos, he keeps cool. Under duress, he is decisive. With serenity that radiates, fuels teammates' belief, Deshaun never met a moment too big for him. From his QB debut in eighth grade, he's been a passing prodigy. This Tiger's paws are huge. He feathers or fires the football with natural ease. There's your first deep shot taken by the Tigers, and it's caught! It's six! Just a perfect throw. Deep throws delivered with deft touch, dropped into precise places, defeating even perfect coverage. Deshaun dominates as a runner, too. Sudden, but smooth. He's just gliding down the field. Innate savvy. Added strength and airborne abandon. And when defenses get overstretched by his run threat, he's got the deep ball accuracy. No one has more touchdowns on throws 20 yards or more downfield. His completion rate in deep balls is also tremendous. The maturity that we see from Deshaun was forged, actually forced on him and his three siblings, by misfortune, which came in very challenging forms. Marty Smith picks up the story in a small town on a lake northeast of Atlanta. This is Gainesville, Georgia. Down on the south side, government housing, apartment A4. This is where Deshaun lived until he was nine years old. It was in the ghetto. As little kids, we were growing up and playing football in the yard, but also seeing the, the drugs, the fighting, and just gangs all around us, too. Sonia Watson is Deshaun's aunt. She speaks on behalf of Deshaun's mother, Deanne, who battled and after more than two years of chemotherapy, defeated tongue cancer, but not before it compromised her speech. Everything changed in 2004. Deshaun was nine years old, and a miracle arrived in a bag of candy. It was a Halloween festival, so I brought the candy back home. It was a card that said Habitat, having four kids, being a single parent, so she just decided to fill it out and what worse can happen. 
Habitat for Humanity is a nonprofit Christian housing ministry that partners with people to build homes. They contacted Deanne. They told about the whole project, about she have to put in hours and everything. Deanne did. She put in a whole lot of hours and she would come and tell me, I know how to build a house. And I would say, you don't know how to build no house, girl. To qualify for her own Habitat home, Deanne logged 200 hours of community service, including attending classes and helping to build homes for other families. She was very excited just to know that she's going to have her own house to her name and be able to have her kids have a backyard. Warwick Dunn, the Florida State legend and Atlanta Falcons Pro Bowl running back, partnered with Habitat to fully furnish the Watson home. Warwick Dunn coming down the hill and presenting us the house and the key. That kind of inspired me to give back and be a part of this Habitat because that's what he did. Watson and his Clemson teammates are building a pair of Habitat homes near campus in what has become an annual philanthropic endeavor for the Tigers. It's great because I know what it did for me and my family and how it inspired us to become the people we are today. And it's quite a story. A Hail Mary, really, in a, a bag of Halloween candy. Deshaun already paying it forward, Tom, and promises to do so much more. No question about it. Captivated here by that wonderful story by Marty Smith. Deshaun joined by Deanne, who has come through her battle with oral cancer and wanted your aunt, Sonia, to be here to speak on behalf of the family. Deshaun, I can see even on your face as you watch that story and you relive the time when you were 15, when your mom was diagnosed. What did she tell you? Um... <clears throat> we kind of sat down in the living room and, uh, you know, she sat me down and, and just told me, you know, she had, she had tongue cancer and, you know, we both just started crying and, you know, the first thing I asked, you know, is, is it life or death, like, or can you pass away with it? And she said, no, you know, the doctor's going to take care of it and, uh, you know, I just want to thank the doctors from Emory, you know, for, you know, blessing her uh, with another tongue and, uh, you know, and keeping her here you know, with me. What did you learn from her fight? Uh, just, you know, dealing with the adversity, and, and it made my faith stronger. You know, she always told me, you know, keep God first, and, and you continue to do what you're doing, and, and don't worry about me. I'm going to handle mine, and you just handle yours, and you're going to, you know, fulfill your dreams, and that's what we did. Yeah, and we're so glad you're up here supporting Deshaun. Sonia, when we see Deshaun play, we see the ultimate dual threat quarterback and the quarterback who's leading the number one team in the country to an undefeated season thus far. What do you see? I see a gift God have gave him. He's spreading his love. He's just like a seed. It's keep growing and growing and growing. He's amazing. You have said you were the first person in the entire family who knew how special his talent was. When was it and why? I say it was in his early days, really. Uh, even I saw it when he was really in Gainesville. Even when he did that play, I couldn't really believe when he just like he dived over it the guy when he's uh had made that touchdown people were saying it was just like superman but sean to <laughs> me is just like i'm telling you he's an amazing kid he's awesome god has really give him love and he's a gift and he's spreading it all over deshaun you have a little superstition before you play, and it involves something that you eat. I can't believe you eat it. You see your mom nodding there knowingly. You eat sour gummy worms before you play games. Did you eat any tonight? Um, no, nah, I didn't tonight. I, sh I think I should have. <laughs> 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 no, but uh, that's just something I, I started back in high school. Uh, me and my my friend, Mikey Gonzalez, I know he's watching, but uh, you know, we always had sour gummy worms and we were sitting next to each other and out of a book bag before the game, we just started eating them. <laughs> and so that's what we used to do. And I thought it just, you know, maybe play good, so. Well, I can't resist the segue to say then from something that's sour to authoring a very, very sweet season. It's been a real privilege to be around you and to cover you. Wonderful play. Kirk, as we go to you with Dabo Sweeney, it's incredible to think of the first Heisman finalist in the history of Clemson football. Yeah, no doubt about that. Um, Dabo, you've been around a lot of great players. When? When did you know? How early did you know about how special he could be? Uh, first time I met him. First time I saw him in camp. You know, 10th grade, he was uh, just different from every other kid in the camp. 
and he's been that way uh, ever since. Five new offensive linemen this year, undefeated, new center, which is big for a quarterback. What kind of impact did he have, you think, not just on the whole team, but especially the offense and that offensive line? Yeah, well, you know, I always believe that when your greatest players uh, are the most committed, most dedicated, most all-in, uh, most focused, best work ethic, everything else rises with that. And uh, he, he's just special. He really is. And as good a player as he is, he's ten times the young man. Mm -hmm. And so when that's your leader, that's the guy that's leading the, the troops, it makes my job really easy. So he's just, uh, you know, a special player. And then, you know, just his, uh, uh, his poise that he carries himself every single, every single day, uh, I think that's elevated everybody's play as well. Last thing, Tom just said first quarter, or first Clemson player to be a finalist in the top five. What has that meant to you and to your program? Well, I just think that it says that you can do anything at Clemson. You know, I think uh, it's been a long time since we've been number one and opportunity to, to be the best in this country. Uh, and that's what we talk about in our program. You can come to Clemson, you can achieve anything, uh, not just, not just uh, on the field, but off the field. But certainly, you know, these guys want to compete to be the best as players. And so he certainly uh, presents that opportunity. Enjoy the night. Congrats on everything. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, Chris. Best thing about having a special player and special person is he's a sophomore, so perhaps a whole lot more to achieve for uh, Deshaun at Clemson. We'll visit with Christian and his family coming up. And in about 15 minutes, we will welcome a new member to the Heisman Trophy family. But all of us want to remember tonight a member of the Heisman family that we lost in June. John David Crow was the ultimate Aggie. Paul Bryant said he was his toughest player ever. John David won the Heisman in 1957. Came back almost every year, beloved by this group. I'll never forget the moment a few years ago when John David gave a big bear hug to Johnny Manziel as the second Aggie to win the award. Will not forget John David Crow. This season, Nissan brought the Heisman Trophy and Heisman Trophy winners to college campuses across the country. How did the Heisman Trophy change your life? With the team I had and the, and the games that we played, uh, I couldn't have done it without my teammates. When you saw Troy play, what did you think? Watching him grow, um, go from a boy to a man to a Heisman Trophy winner was, uh, was an amazing evolution to watch. How many times have you seen the run? You know, I hadn't seen it today. <laughs> Were you ever faster than him? I don't know. <laughs> no, Aaron was fast. Well, nowadays when people see me, uh, they never talk about my pro career. It's always Oklahoma and the Heisman Trophy. Congratulations to all of you on a great season. Good luck tonight, and we look forward to having a new roommate at the Nissan Heisman House. Tradition is built from a foundation. And Mike Garrett is the bedrock of USC's rushing legacy, the founder of Tailback U, the Trojans' first Heisman winner back in 65. Growing up in East L.A., Mike was actually a quarterback in high school and a star outfielder, too. But at 5'9", about 185 pounds, he became a three-year stalwart for John McKay and threatened all of the NCAA career rushing records that had stood. In the pros, he won two AFL titles with the Chiefs, and then served his alma mater as athletic director. Still lives in Southern California and is very active in community programs there. Folks, please salute our golden anniversary Heisman Trophy winner, Mike Garrett of USC. Mike, great to have you here. I know you said as a kid you were inspired by Hop Cassidy. He won this award. So many other guys came along were inspired by you. These players inspired by some of these guys back here, and now high school players are inspired by them. Yeah. Talk about what it's meant for a half century to be part of this, this lineage. You know, everything about life to me is about winning and being around people who win and, and uh, who won. And, and um, Howard Hopalong Cassidy was kind of an example for me. And so uh, I think right behind me we have Marcus Allen and so many of the great running backs at USC. But, it's about winning and being successful in life, and you start off uh, uh, in, a, in an endeavor like this. It's great to compete, and uh, I always played it the best I could, so that's what I kind of set for the rest of my life. 
I mentioned your height and weight. Your running style was a little bit unorthodox. You were always kind of doubted. How, how much of your success was, was carrying that chip, or did you, did you not listen to any of that stuff? Well, they always told me I was too small and not fast enough, and, and um, my point was I had to win, and I had to figure out a way to do it. So whatever way I found, it worked, and, and I'm just very proud of it. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Golden anniversary Thank Heisman you. Trophy winner, Mike Garrett, who, when he played for the Trojans, did a little bit of everything. But, but like Mike, despite his versatility, Christian McCaffrey has often been doubted as well, despite mastering everything that he has tried. Christian grew up one of four boys. He's now the shortest of the four brothers, but by far the fastest. Told me the household in Colorado was a little bit messy, noisy but also very competitive. And through his drive and his versatility, he broke Barry Sanders' 27-year-old all-purpose yardage record this season with 461 en route to beating, Mike, the Trojans with the Pac-12 title. All-purpose for all time. Extreme excellence in each role. Runner. Gets a sprint to the far sideline. They're not going to catch him. Receiver. Returner. There goes McCaffrey. What a weapon he is. Relentless blocker. Surprising passer. McCaffrey in its throw. Touchdown, Stanford. Christian is blessed with the skills of a scat back. Dexterous. Nimble. Elusive. Sudden. Swift. But also power to plow between the tackles with astounding stamina. He attacks all assignments with high energy and angry intensity, driven to defy doubters, shatter stereotypes, to prove himself every way, every play. Check this stat. Even when defenses stack the box with fronts of eight or more men to stop the run, Christian piled up an astounding 960 rushing yards. That's more than 400 yards clear of the season's second highest total. He had the most runs of 10 plus yards and zero fumbles against a stacked box. And he'd tell you that's a tribute to the Cardinals' fine offensive line led by Outland Trophy winner Joshua Garnett. Humility despite high achievement is what the McCaffreys are all about. And it's kind of hard to be humble when Grandpa was the first sprinter under the 10-second flat mark to cover 100 yards, and Dad had three Super Bowl rings hanging around the house. But Christian brings his own drive to explore and improve on many platforms, as Jim Wojciechowski found out. Well, it all started... My freshman year of high school, my neighbor told me that it's the first way to get girls to like you is to, is to play the piano. <laughs> Hasn't worked, to be honest with you. Just when you think you have Stanford running back Christian McCaffrey figured out, you don't. I actually found out today that Christian could play the piano as to the list of what can he not do. It, it doesn't surprise me. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me if he played six instruments. So if we put a tip jar on the piano? <laughs> Well, I couldn't play at Nordstrom's, but um, I, I definitely play a little bit. But you maybe get a buck or two in there. I could get a buck or two, probably from you know my parents or, or one of my siblings, just trying to trying to show support. Christian's mom Lisa played soccer at Stanford. His uncle Billy won a national championship at Duke. His grandfather won silver at the 1960 Olympics. His older brother Max plays at Duke. His two younger brothers Dylan and Luke are on recruiters' radars. And his dad, Ed, was an All-American at Stanford and three-time Super Bowl winner with San Francisco and Denver. And you look at some of my family members and, and you're very humbled uh, because they've done so many great things. I would say the best advice that my parents have given me is to have fun in what you do and enjoy the moment. You know, it happens so fast and so I've really taken that to heart. And he's smart enough that he rarely mentions the H word, Heisman. Instead, McCaffrey is about winning games and winning respect. He is the son of Stanford. Christian is the shining star. And that is music to Stanford's ears. Gene Wojciechowski there, and we're joined by Christian, Lisa, and Ed. I touched on this with you a little bit earlier about your family's athletic pedigree, which Gene described there. If everyone's getting together, and going to dinner in a fairly large vehicle, and the seats are arranged by athletic ability, who's sitting up front? 
That's tough. Um, <laughs> I get asked that a lot, actually. It's funny, and I always say my mom, because if I don't, uh, dinner's, dinner's not served when I come home. So I'm, <laughs> I'm going to go with my mom. Smart. A, a retort there, Ed? Yeah, well, if mama's not happy, nobody's happy. <laughs> we all know that. When you score touchdowns, which you've done frequently this year, now you have a pretty modest and simple touchdown ritual. You tap your chest typically five times. You point up to the sky. But that was not always the case. If we can take a look at a piece of tape, take a look at the moves, which are impressive, but look at what happens once we get to the end zone. The Sharpie comes out. If we can go back to Terrell Owens in the, and then the full-on throw into the audience, you know, the crowd. I'm not even going to let you say it. You're just going to have to suffer through that highlight. Mom, I'm going to either ask for an explanation or a defense of that. Well, that is not typical of him in a normal game. I'll say that, thank goodness. But he was playing with his older brothers and his older brother's friends, and he was the, the little kid playing with them, and they egged him on, and they made him do it. And it's not easy uh, to grow up where your father has been so successful in the sport that you pursue. Uh, how do you think each of your kids, and Christian in particular here, has embraced that, the example that you set athletically, as well as mom? Well, we never pushed them into playing any sports. We didn't ask them to play football. We waited for them to ask us. Christian's older brother, Max, decided he wanted to play one year, and so he signed up really to have fun with his friends and to be part of something. And uh, Christian saw him playing, and the first time he saw Max on the field, he couldn't wait to suit up. We were holding him back, trying to keep him from running out into the practice. And so they all, all four of our boys, fell in love with football on their own. It was their decision to play. It's their decision to keep playing. Not really sure there was much of a decision ever to go to Stanford, considering where mom and dad went. Wanted to bring in Coach David Shaw right now. David, you coach all your players as if they are your sons, but what makes you particularly proud of this son on this night? The biggest thing about Christian is the mentality, the way he approaches every single day, every single practice, every single rep and every single practice. Very serious, very, very hardworking, uh, finishes every run 40 yards and then jumps right back in the huddle. Um, sometimes you got to pull him out of practice every once in a while just to get other guys some reps, but he's got the mentality of a winner. His toughness, his toughness is infectious on the team, his playmaking, his energy. Um, we're just glad he's on our team. David, people may not know you were a teammate of Ed's and now you coach Christian so you're used to making big decisions put you on the spot one big play to win one huge game whose number are you calling dad <laughs> or son right now Ed's a little past his prime God love him. <laughs> uh, I'm handing the ball to Christian repeatedly <laughs> certainly a family affair and so much to be proud of a spectacular season Christian carrying your team and all the way to New York City you would be the youngest Heisman Trophy winner ever, Chris. And a solid group from the great state of Colorado. Thank you, Tom. Uh, the brothers are here. I, I, Dylan and Luke, did, did Max make it? He had a practice at Duke. Hey, welcome, all, all three brothers here. Uh, Dylan, by the way, quarterbacking Valor Christian to a state title. Is that six state titles in the last seven years that I had school? He's the reason all these college recruiters are probably gathering at the top of the escalator here. Congratulations to all of the McCaffrey family and enjoy yourselves here in New York. Now, last night in this PlayStation Theater, speaking of great high school achievers, Wendy's handed out honors to the top male and female high school athletes in the country. And the winners are in the audience tonight. Let's congratulate Taylor Campos and Zach Hughes, winners of the 2015 Wendy's High School Heisman. It is almost that time for the big announcement. Sports Center, of course, will have a reaction to this and all of the news on this busy Saturday. Army Navy highlights as well. That's a game you'll want to stick around and watch again coming up shortly. Time now to invite the two dozen Heisman Trophy winners to the stage to welcome in the newest member to this wonderful family. The announcement is coming up. The 2015 Heisman Trophy winner just minutes away from New York. Come on up, guys. the Heisman Trophy presentation. Jim Kelly would have rather played elsewhere. But when the USFL folded, the Bills still held his NFL rights. So in 1986, the big arm quarterback became a member of a team that eventually included some really big personalities. We had egos on our team. Myself, Bruce, Thurman, Andre, Cornelius Bennett, Daryl. 
I mean, I could go on and on. I mean, those guys, they were great, and they knew it. And they, you know, just ask them. Oh, baby, I'm for real. And that is following the Heisman Trophy presentation at 9.30 Eastern time, the next 30 for 30 film, Four Falls of Buffalo. The story of those Bills from 90 to 93 who appeared in four straight Super Bowls and came up short in them all, 9.30 Eastern time. Well, Christian McCaffrey, Derrick Henry, Deshaun Watson, a long time ago, we have enjoyed hearing about their growth, their journeys from those little guys to the, the stars they are in the front row. And one more time, I want to say what a pleasure it has been getting to know these guys and watching them play throughout the season, representing the best of college football. We wish all of them well. Time now, though, for the announcement, who will be the 2015 Heisman Trophy winner, the season's most anticipated handoff. Brian Oberfell, Heisman Trophy trustee for the announcement. Good evening, everyone. I'm Brian Oberfell, and in just a few moments, on behalf of the Heisman trustees, I'll be announcing the winner of the 81st Heisman Trophy. First, though, congratulations to the finalists on their outstanding achievements and the way in which they've represented the game of football. John Heisman was responsible for many innovations in football, and he'd be proud to see you're continuing the tradition. One of you today will be joining the elite Heisman fraternity. These gentlemen standing behind me are ready to welcome you in. From this day forward, your name will be followed by the words Heisman Trophy winner. Without further ado, the winner of this year's Heisman Trophy is Derek Henry. I'm a little nervous. I don't do this every day, so. But first off, I just want to thank God for bringing me here and winning this prestigious award. You know, he's been so good to me in my life, and I've been honored and blessed and with this opportunity. And, you know, it's just a kid. It's been my lifelong goal and a dream of mine, and I'm just so thankful. <clears throat> first, I'd like to thank the, the Heisman Trophy Trust for allowing me to join this brotherhood with former winners who are standing behind me. Some of my... My football heroes that I looked up and idolized myself behind. And it's just been an a, a honor just to be here and just be with these guys. And Christian and Deshaun, man, y'all keep at it, man. God is behind y'all. Y'all had a successful season. I'm sure I'll see y'all again here uh, next year. Um, mom and dad, man, my mom, my best friend who brought me into this world. I just want to thank you so much for always being there for me. Through my struggles, you always hurt me. Anytime I was struggling, you was always there for me. I'll call you late at night, you'd be asleep. You no, know, you had to be up three, three o'clock in the morning, but you would answer for me. Just to, hear what, just to hear what I had to say and help me get through where I, I need to get through. To my dad, my number one fan, man, just kept me in sports. Always was there for me, day after day. You know what I'm saying? And being young and being so supportive and keeping me in sports, I just want to thank you so much, man, and always being there for me, man. And even in the games, every game I played, you was always loud. I'll probably be able to hear you in Alabama, but it's only 2,000 people, so I won't be able to hear you. Um, my grandmother, the woman who made me to who I am today, I want to thank you so much. Even though you couldn't be here, I feel you in spirit, and I love you so much. You know, uh, you made me to who I am today, hard work, dedication, and just doing what I want to do. You always told me always keep God first 
and pray that um, I'll always make it far. And I just want to thank you and let you know I love you and I'm praying for you. To my teammates, my brothers, my family, and the, the, the boys I love the most. You know, coming in Alabama from Florida, they all accepted me. They all, they all loved me and all supported me. And this season, man, considering me as a leader, taking me as a leader, young guys following behind me, you know what I'm saying, and watching me work every day. And all I want to do is just affect them by the way I practice and by the way I work hard. And I just want to thank them so much. My office line, if I could have had them here, I would have brought them all. You know what I'm saying? They, they, they work so hard for me. They take pride in control the line of scrimmage, making sure I have success. And through this year, man, just looking at these guys, the, the courage they had in me, the faith they had in me, I knew I couldn't let them down. Everybody always asked me about carries and what I thought about it and how I felt. But when you got teammates like that who love you and care for you, it don't matter how you feel or how bad it hurts or what hurts you, you got to make sure that you're making those guys happy by helping them win and uh, getting a victory. To Coach Saban. A great ambassador, man, the, the man who believed in me by recruiting me, ran between the University of Alabama, seeing me grow as a player and as a person, and you can learn a lot from him, just from the game and from football. And, you know, every day I come to that uh, football facility, I know it's going to be a challenge. I know every day is, is not, it's not going to be easy. No day is easy, but I know every day I'm going to be challenged by you. You're a loyal coach. You always challenge us. And um, I just love you, Coach, man. <laughs> Without you, I wouldn't be here today. Coach Burns. I can say a lot can go on and on, but this past few years has been a blessing just to be coached by you. And you know, just as much as you're proud of me, every day I wake up, I'm so proud to call you my coach. Every day I wake up, I'm so proud to call you my coach. And just to watch the guys you, you coached in the previous years, I knew the day we talked when you recruited me that I'll have a chance to be up on this stage. And I just want to thank you so much, Coach. And I know it, it was a hard time, you know what I'm saying, being patient with me, but you stuck through it. Every day you, 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 you work with me. Every day you help me grow as a player and as a person. And I can learn so much from you every day. You, you always spit knowledge to us about life and football and it's just bigger than the game. And I just want to thank you so much. To Coach Pat and JT, I love y'all. And y'all know how much y'all mean to me. And I thank God for y'all every day for the blessings y'all did in my life and bring y'all into my life. You know, y'all always believe in me as a young kid that I can go somewhere and be something special. Without y'all, I wouldn't be here today. You know, countless hours being with me, away from y'all family, and y'all family accepting me as one. I just want to thank y'all so much, man. And I mean, God is good just to have y'all in my life, always supporting me, always being around. To Coach Cocker, I forgot Coach Ramsey, man, and my high school coach who was also, also there for me and watched me grow as a player and made sure I always worked hard and gave me every opportunity to go to, to, go to college football. To uh, Coach Cochran and his, and his strength staff at Alabama, man. Coach Cochran, I just want to thank him so much because he spent relentless hours with us, man, every day. He's like a head coach to us all. And he's, every day he's worked with us, he brings energy. We all feed off him and he makes sure we're in the best shape possible to go out there and perform at the highest level. I just want to thank him so much and his staff. He makes sure his staff is always on point and making sure we do what we need to do. To, athletic, to, to the athletic director, Bill Battle, I just want to thank you for allowing me to play at the University of Alabama. There's so much you do for our, our program, and we just want to thank you so much that you, you dedicated to us. Oh, you played at Alabama, and the roots of Alabama is always in you, and I just want to thank you so much. <coughs> to the University of Alabama for the education they provided me specifically, Chancellor Witt and President Bell, who are both here tonight, and all my professors. I thank y'all for grow, helping me grow as a, a person and as a student. And you know, there's no easy way I'm going through college and I faced adversity, but you all helped me and gave me the opportunity to come to the great school, the University of Alabama, the best school in the country. And to the Alabama academic support staff, Jeff Allen, the training room staff, and, and really all the support staff at Alabama that does so much in all aspects, help you be successful. I just want to thank y'all who helped me so much, who done so much for me. Without y'all, I couldn't have done it. And I just want to talk to the kids that's looking and watching this TV today. I just want to give y'all advice. And I hope I, I'm, hope, I hope I'm somebody you can idolize yourself behind and look up to because God is everything. And always keep God first. Always pray. Don't be afraid to pray. He'll always hear your cry. And you know what I'm saying? You, if you have dreams, go chase them. If you believe it, you can achieve it. And God will be there every step of the way. I'm a living testament, man. Growing up, having this dream, 
I'm so nervous, but <laughs> I never thought I'd be up here. But, you know, you know, God is good, and I get on my hands and knees every night and pray. I'm thanking for everything. So just keep God first, always pray, and you always chase your dream. And I want to accept this trophy and the rest in peace of my brother, Alti Tempini, who's been a brother to me, who, who died uh, this year. And I just want to tell him I love him and I miss him. And God bless him. Roll Tide. Darren, congratulations. Thank you for sharing your heart, for sharing your story. This is yours now. You, 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 can, you can lift it up and carry it. You, all those carries you had all season long, the wisdom your grandmother said, where it would carry you, carry this back to Gladys. I will. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you so <laughs> now much. these guys want to congratulate you as well. You. Test to you. Yes, our trusty accounting friends at Deloitte just handed me the official results here uh, in the midst of that thoughtful speech. we got a lot to go through here. We'll make it quick. The regional votes, how close it was. But we'll start with this, Chris. Who was the runner-up? Christian McCaffrey of Stanford, your runner-up to Derrick Henry. 1,832 points to 1,539. That leaves Deshaun Watson in third, Baker Mayfield, and Keenan Reynolds. Now, there's been a lot of talk this week about who isn't in the front row, some going so far as to call it a snub of Baker Mayfield. Folks, he was superb on the field, but the voting results dictate the front row and that invitation from the Heisman folks. And that gap between third and fourth, it is significant, 831 points. Fifth place, Navy's Keenan Reynolds. He was the Nissan fan choice. Now the highest service academy finisher in 52 years since Roger Staubach. Let's look at the map. This always tells us how the Heisman was won. It was not widespread voting. All three of our finalists were the top three in each three in each region. Henry took five of the six. I want to focus on the far west. Christian McCaffrey, 51 more points than Henry there. But when you look at the south and in mid-Atlantic, especially the south, Henry had 149 more points there. And in the Mid-Atlantic, Watson did very well in terms of how close it was. 20th closest race of the modern era. Chris. Joe, thank you. On behalf of all of us here at ESPN, we wish you happy holidays. We thank you for being here in New York. We'll hear more from Derek on sports that are coming up later. The 30 for 30 is coming up right now. Derek Henry, 2015 Heisman Trophy winner from Alabama.